One of the things I get asked a lot from people is how do I add colour to my pencil drawings? Essentially how do I make this into that? The um, process is relatively quite easy, all you need is Photoshop and the know-how. So in this tutorial I'm going to run through the process that I use to um, colour in line art. I know this isn't the only way to do it and I stress to try out heaps of different ways, this is just the way I enjoy doing the most because mainly it doesn't destroy your pencils, it keeps them there. and um, as far as I know this is a pretty similar method to what a lot of comic book artists use. But yeah, let's get straight into it eh? Alright, so one of the first things we're going to want to do is obviously get our artwork into Photoshop. Now if you've drawn the picture that you want to colour on a piece of paper, you're obviously going to want to scan it. Um, if you don't have a scanner you can take a photo of it, but overall the quality of the photo that you're going to take is going to suck. Um, scanning the document is going to give you better resolutions to work with and if you ever want to pr print the picture in the future it's going to look a lot better. Alright, so I've plugged in my scanner, it's all turned on, we've cranked up Photoshop. First thing we want to do is we want to go to File, come down to Import. Now if you've installed your um, scanner's drivers you're going to have a little um, extra uh, option here to choose. You can work through that. I like to use this option here, this is um, Photoshop's little pre-built scanning engine. Pretty much it's just going to have this WIA and the name of your scanner or your printer scanner or whatever you have, multifunction printer. Um, if you just hit that, it's going to bring up this dialog box. Now obviously you're going to want to set your um, settings for scanning if you've never done this before. We want the DPI at 300 at least. You can work at 600 and, or anything higher but it's going to slow down your computer. You want to have something that's pretty cranked up if you're going to work in higher resolutions. I like using 300 because it's pretty much as high as resolution you're going to need unless you're going into like super ultra high detail and that sort of thing. Um, and again you want to change it to grayscale. Do not work and um, do not scan your line art in color. You, um, it's just going to degrade the overall quality of the line art. If you scan it in, scan it in grayscale you're not going to have these random colored artifacts popping up everywhere on your lines. So those, those two are pretty much the two settings you need to know about when scanning in. Um, obviously you're going to give given all these brightness, contrasts, and if you're using your driver settings to scan in the artwork you're going to get given a whole heap more. Just keep them all at the defaults. These two here are the ones that you want to um, stick to. Alright so you just hit OK and we're going to um, hit preview. Now preview is going to do a quick scan of the area just to give us a um, preview so we can select the items on the page that we actually want to scan. Now I only want this little scale here, so we're going to drag these little squares in just to select the scale, just like so, and then hit scan. And that's going to scan off a um, 300 dpi resolution image of what we selected. Alright, so there we have it. Now obviously we're going to want to flip our image around because it's upside down. So we can just come up to edit. Actually we go to image, rotate canvas and I'll just make 180, there we go, and now rotate it around 180. Alright, so now that we've scanned the image in as in grayscale, we're going to notice that Photoshop is automatically going to set the color mode to grey 8-bit. Um, this means that when we try to add color to the image, all the colors are going to come up as grey. So what we want to do is change the color mode to RGB. We can do this by going image, mode, and just hitting the RGB here. Um, now if you're concerned about wanting to print this in CMYK, it's fine. I've done all my artwork in RGB as beginnings and converted them later to CMYK. I like working in RGB to begin with because it's a lot less um, taxing on your computer and you can get away with a lot more things. You'll notice that when working in CMYK to do stuff that Photoshop will block out certain filters and certain adjustments and that sort of thing. Um, this is purely because those filters and adjustments were made to work with RGB images and can't handle CMYK I suppose. Um, so working in RGB and then converting to CMYK later is perfectly fine. You probably notice that the colors might darken a little when you go back to um, when you convert to CMYK, that's because CMYK has a lot less colors in its garment. Um, you probably won't notice too much of a difference, but if you're using like real bright intense and like neon type of colors, you're going to notice those are going to dumb down quite a bit. So it's a good idea just to avoid using like high end scale, really intense, 
bright colors. You're not going to notice any changes to the line art itself because it's been scanned in as grayscale and it's going to remain grayscale once you change to color mode. It doesn't mean it's going to just throw on some random colors, it just means you're changing what mode of color you're going to go into. Anyway, so the first thing I like to do when um, just after I've scanned my line art in is to clean up a bit. As you can notice, you can see the um, pencil smudges on the paper and everything. We've got random artifacts from images that was next to the one I wanted. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to our layer palette here and we're just going to double click on the layer. This will bring up our new layer box. Um, pretty much this is going to convert the uh, background layer into a layer so it can work with. It just gives us a lot more options and at the end of the day we're not going to be able to put our background layer on top of our colors and that's what we want to do. So I'm just going to name this layer Line Art because that's what it is and we're just going to hit OK. So as you can see it's changed from a background layer into a normal layer that we can work with. Um, all right. So now I want to get rid of all this horrible smudginess around the edges of my um, picture. So what we want to do is we want to bring up our level adjustment dialog box. We can simply do that by pressing Control L or going to image adjustments levels. Alright, this is going to bring up this little box here. Um, before we do anything, make sure preview is ticked so you can see what you're doing. Now, levels are kind of difficult to explain, but in terms of working in black and white, it's pretty easy. Pretty much, this little black arrow, the more you drag it into the center, the darker all your lines are going to get, as you can see there. Is, um, you can see by the histograph here that the blacks peak over here, but if we go right over there, it's going to turn the whole page black. So we want to find a sweet spot where we're happy with. Now, you also notice it's going to intensify all this um, kind of smudgy pencils around the image. So that's when we want to drag our white in. The further we drag our white in it's going to bring the white or we'll tensify the white up a bit. So I like to, you can just drag it in a little bit. You'll notice that your lines will start disappearing if you drag it in too much so you want to find the sweet spot. And that's pretty much around the mids of where it peaks there. Don't touch the grey too much because that's going to kind of screw things around. Um, just play around with the black and white. So we're just going to hit OK and that'll be all done. Alright, so now our level's all done. We want to try and get rid of all these little scribbles and spots and stuff. Um, Instinct's going to tell you to use the eraser tool. I'm going to say no. Mainly because you've got limited history states or undo states. And if you really mess up your image, it's going to be hard to bring it back. And you might even have to rescan it and start the process over again if you destroy it too much. So I'm going to show you how to use a vector masks, which is a non-destructive editing technique. So pretty much you want to come over and you want to select your layer here. Come down and click on this little box here with the um, circle inside it. That'll add a vector mask to it. Now making sure your vector mask is selected, it'll have these little black lines around it you can see by clicking on the image and clicking on the mask again. You want to come over and you want to select your brush tool. Now come up and make sure that your opacity and flow are set to 100% and you've got a feathered or fuzzy brush selected. Now the rule of thumb when using vector masks is black is going to take away and white is going to bring back. This is really neat because if you really mess it up you don't have to rely on your undo. So you can just change the color and paint it back. I'll give you an example of that. We can paint over, oops, paint over my scalp. So we come over, change it to white and we can bring our scalp back. Easy as that. It doesn't actually erase the image away, it just masks it off, which is pretty cool. So with our black selected and a smaller brush size, you can use the bracket buttons on your keyboard to shrink and increase the brush size. We want to paint over the little scribbles here. As you can notice, it's bringing up the transparent background. Um, at this stage, I like to add in a layer below the uh, line out there so just by clicking the new layer button and dragging the layer down and just selecting white as our color in a paint bucket and painting it back background. It just gives the overall effect that the white's still there. Um, later I'll use that layer as a background color but anyway back to um, a mask. So we select our brush tool, come over here and click on the layer mask there. Shrink it down when you're getting close to um, the edges of your lines and just paint them out.
like so. You can be pretty fussy about this or you can just quickly go around and take out the noticeable specs. I'm usually a little bit fanatic about this. I quite often even can um, improve lines which I don't like and that's all I'm now I'm happy with my lineup. It's all clean and spick and span and whatnot. Um, this is where the magic starts to happen. We start preparing the layer so we can color it. Now, um, what we don't want to do is paint over our lines. We want to preserve our lines as much as possible. And a really cool thing about the technique I'm about to show you is that you don't actually touch this layer where, the, where your pencils and or inks are on. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our line art layer, making sure it's selected and then come out to our layer blend mode drop down here and then we're going to select from one of these blends. We're going to use multiply. Pretty much the easiest way to explain multiply is it's going to turn everything white into a completely transparent. Now this works right up through the grayscale up to black, black being non-transparent, grey being slightly transparent, but whatever is white is not going to show up. So now we're going to stick a new layer and drag it below our line art. To save, um, to save us from accidentally painting over our lines, we'll select our line art and hit this padlock so we're not going to be able to touch our line art anymore. Come back down to this new layer here and we're just going to name that layer flats. Now the technique I use, I generally lay down a bunch of flat colors before I add tones to them. Um, this is where you probably want to decide how you're going to paint your picture. Traditionally I've been taught to paint uh, light on dark, so I generally paint down light, um, dark colours as my base flats and then work up tones and highlights using lighter colours on top of those flat colours. Um, a lot of people just start with a mid-tone and add shadows to it that's fine it's all about how you want to paint everybody paints a different way you just gotta suss out the way you do it what I'm going to show you now is just the way I paint I've moved away from going completely dark to having a mid-tone and then adding shadows and highlights to what I paint before we jump straight into coloring um, our line out here I'm gonna change the color of the background um, mainly because we're obviously painting a white or whitish scale onto a white background. We want to contrast the background from the foreground so we can just better determine the, uh, the both. This just adds depth to your drawing. It's always good not to paint on a white background I find. Um, especially if you plan to add a darker color background later you'll find that your foreground object will be too bright for the background. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to lay down a grey mid-tone. Um, this can be anything from at least 10% grey right up to probably about 70% grey. I wouldn't go too dark unless of course you're doing a real super dark piece. Um, basically choose a grey that best matches your intended tone of your um, final background that you could add later. So to do that what we're going to do is we're going to come over to this white layer that we made earlier. We're just going to name that BG for now for background. And we'll come up and we'll choose uh, just any one of these greys. And we'll come over to our toolbar here and select the paint bucket and just paint it in. Then of course to stop us from painting on the background in a later date we'll just make sure that layer is selected to come up and hit this padlock here. And now again we'll lock the layer up so we can't, so we can't uh, paint on it accidentally. Uh, again just come up, select your flat layer there and we're almost ready to start painting. So now we're going to um, select the brush that we're going to be using to paint our flats down. Um, so we just come over to the toolbar on the side here and we just click on the brush tool and that will allow you to select your brush from up here. So you just hit this drop down here and um, obviously before I told you to choose a feathered edge brush. Feathered edge brushes are kind of good for giving that whole airbrushed effect. At this stage we're just, we're just slopping down thick layer of paint. Equivalent to like doing outlines before you actually draw in a picture. It's just we're laying down the base color and then we're going to paint over it. So we want to come up to one of these top few brushes, usually the first few by default in Photoshop are hard edge brushes, and we'll just choose the biggest one out of that for now. Now um, obviously we're going to want to choose our uh, base color. Now I mentioned before I like using a darker base color to start with and then build highlights on top of it. 
Um, this is entirely up to user preference. You can paint however you want. If you feel more comfortable using a lighter color and then painting shadows on, by all means, go for it. There is no like damning rules on how people paint. It's just the end product that matters. So um, I'm going to come over and choose one of my swatches here. We'll choose probably a darker color just to start with. Maybe this color here looks kind of a... Oh, that one there. Come back here and we can paint on that like so making sure that we're painting on our flat slate if you followed my instructions both the background layer and the line art layer should be blocked so you can't paint on it or bring up a warning if you do try it for instance we can demonstrate bring up this little thing and a loud noise so we want to paint on our flat layer so you can make your brush bigger by using the bracket keys on your keyboard and we'll just make it a bit bigger so we can just lay down a mass color if you're using a uh, Wacom tablet, you're going to notice that your pressure sensitivity is going to determine the overall size of your brush. You can see there I'm going from light to pressing down hard. If you're using a mouse, it's, the paint's just going to fill the entire circle of the brush. So we'll just paint close to the edge for now. Don't go right to the edge. And just lay down some color around it. All right, for the edges, I like to zoom in zoom in quite a bit and we'll just shrink the brush down now this is not the only way of laying down your flats the um, other way of you doing this you could use uh, the pen tool and uh, lay down a vector object behind your line art obviously if you're not very comfortable using the pen tool this is probably going to appeal a lot more to you but um, using a vector object for the background also allows you to change the color of those objects a lot easier Okay, so I've got one color down. Now I'm just going to make the um, teeth here on my skull a lighter color to the bone. So um, I think what I'll do is I'll just come over to our color here and we'll just double click it. And we'll just bring our color range up a bit lighter, more into the white zone. Uh, maybe take a bit of color off that. Just go, okay. Again, zoom in and we'll just lay down some colors here. You find with using a mouse for this sort of stuff, you um, might get a real sore wrist. I like using tablets and pen interfaces uh, with painting. And if you're going to get into a uh, paint, uh, digital painting seriously, you need to consider buying yourself a uh, Wacom tablet or even uh, like a cheapy brand like a Genesis tablet or something. They work perfectly fine. But um, I can highly recommend the. Uh, Wacom Bamboo Fun Pen and Touch mainly because it doubles as a touchpad and it's it's just been a really good tablet for me. Now we're on to our next stage. We've got all our colors down so we can uh, zoom out here. So yeah, you're probably thinking yeah, it looks pretty out of whack. This color here is too dark for the teeth and whatnot. Um, it doesn't matter too much. The uh, tones or the airbrushing that we're going to lay on top of us is going to determine the overall look at the end of the day. Um, we can adjust the colors, you, know, you can adjust the colors if you really want to, but yeah, I would wait until you finish off the whole, all the um, airbrushing and such. So now we, um, what we're going to do is we're going to lock our flat layer to stop us from um, painting on that. And we're going to come down and we're going to make a new layer and we're going to call that one, I'll just call it something like tones for now. Or actually we'll call it highlights, that seems better fitting. Um, I generally name the layers relevant to what what they are. Generally tones or highlights, shadows and that sort of thing. Um, you'll probably find a set of names that you can work with and more familiar with. This is just the stuff I do. It's nothing set in concrete, you can name them whatever you want. Alright, so obviously now we're going to want a um, airbrush, a lighter colour on here. So we can... We could probably actually use a color similar to this. Well, we'll just use uh, well, I drop that one using the eyedropper tool. You can press I on your keyboard, and then we're going to come over and we'll just double click this one again. We'll just choose a lighter color, but instead of going off to the side, I think we'll just come straight up. That way, we'll keep the same color saturation. We'll just have a lighter variant. Now, that's obviously taken into a kind of a skin tone. It's not so great, so I might just verge over to white more and kind of get more of a more of a bleached bone maybe. Yeah, I'll just hit OK. Alright, 
So for doing this, we're not going to want to use a hard brush. We're going to want to go back to that feathered brush there. So we're just going to select our paintbrush, I'll come up to here, and we will select one of these brushes here. Probably about 100. Yeah, it seems about big enough. Now, um, the first thing you know, you're going to notice is when you paint, your airbrush is going to spill over the edge. We don't want that. So we're going to select the magic wand tool here and just come over to a flat slayer. And even though the flat slayer is locked, it still allows us to select stuff. And using the um, darker color of paint on the scale here, we can just tap that and it'll select a outline of that one. And coming back to our highlights, and then just coming over and reselecting our brush again and now you notice that when you paint it keeps it contained all right to hide the um obviously these little little flashy lines that outline the selection they're going to get distracting so um to hide that you just press Control h it'll still be selected but it just hides the um little dotted lines around the around the selection okay so um First things first is we're going to want to identify where our light source is coming from. So obviously from the line out here we can see it's kind of shadowed around this back end here and around here. So it looks like the light is coming from a slight angle downwards from this direction here. So this means we're going to want to kind of um, lay down our airbrush to relate to that. So obviously we're going to want to put more heavier um, tones on this side and a lot, a lot less on this side um, so our our flat color pretty much determines the color of our shadow um, before I, I lay down the airbrushes I like to come up to the top here and select our flow option I like to drop it down quite a bit pretty much this makes the brush a lot, a lot, le, a lot less stronger so you're not plastering down the full amount of color at once it just lightly layers it um, especially if you're using a mouse because you don't have any pressure sensitivity it's not going to pick up the um, the subtle differences you can use with the with your tablet pen um, if you lower the flow right down using a mouse it's going to be you're just going to have a, a lot more fun with this um, if you're using a work on tablet you can experiment without lowering the flow down I generally I generally just do it anyway it's it just adds a lot more subtleness to it rather than just plastering down the full color at once. Um, to start with I generally make my brush, my brush a bit bigger and then I just lay down a light color along the edge of the light source. Now um, before I start adding in intricate um, highlights I want to come back and I want to bring back the um, areas where the shadow has obviously taken up my highlight there so I'm going to use the brush tool come up and I'm going to select a feathered brush for that as well probably around 200 and we can just erase it out like so and bring it back making it smaller we can bring elements of shadow out and just bring back certain things you can see it's already starting to take form and it's lo looking a lot more 3d than it was just as the plain plain color um, this process is going to be a bit of a learning curve for people who haven't painted or are not very confident with um, shadows and highlights uh, my best advice is to keep track of your light source um, even still I don't I never get it 100% 100% right um, a natural light an object doesn't have just one light source you're gonna have multiple light sources for instance if you have something outside um, eventually you'll, you'll get the feel for it and you'll, you'll start seeing things just go out and actually observe your subject I mean I know it sounds cliche but go out and draw an apple or fruit or whatever or you can make it interesting you can grab a goat skull or something if you got one of those lying around but um yeah eventually you'll start seeing how shadows and light sources play in that sort of thing and it just it just becomes natural um, changing to your brush tool I, I used keyboard shortcuts a lot sorry um, to change between the eraser tool and the brush tool it's just simply B for brush E for eraser and using the bracket tools change the size once you have your brushes laid down I, I very rarely go back to the um, the toolbar but uh, with a smaller brush 
you can start laying in more intricate details and highlights and that sort of thing. Obviously, oops, got the wrong button there. Obviously, in little areas like this, we're going to want to kind of pop them out a bit more. Again, further behind the light source, we want lighter ones, where are brighter ones to be at the front. But yeah, just lay down as much as you feel comfortable with. All right, so I've done the uh, first lot of um, highlights here. Pretty happy how that's coming up. Now I'm just going to add a uh, second layer of highlights, and we're just going to add that above that one. We'll just call that highlights two. And in this one, I just like to get straight white. Again, making sure I've got this selection around the background. We can just hide that Control H. Um, you can lock highlights, and we'll just come back to highlights two. Just using a straight white, I like to throw in some subtle highlights on the key areas where the light's hitting. Um, again, making sure you got your flow right down, because this using straight white is kind of like um, the final stage. This is where you like put your your absolute pinpoints of highlight. You don't want to overdo this too much, otherwise it's going to look washed out and kind of well, terrible. And you can really kill your piece if you use too much straight white for a highlight. Unless, of course, the subject's white, then of course it's going to be straight white, isn't it? Um, using the eraser tool, you can obviously bring it. Um, doing this in a separate layer also saves your previous work from being destroyed. If you like mess up the white or add too much white, you're not going to be continuously coming back and repainting in that same color. Um, selecting the teeth here. Again, we can uh, bring this white in, we can just make little areas pop in there and there. So yeah, um, now we can move on to our next step. Uh, if you haven't used a real dark color for your flats colors, you might want to add in like extra shadows and that sort of thing. This is um, pretty easy, same process as doing the highlights, but we just use a dark color rather than a light color. So yeah, I'll just go through how to do that. So again, we want to lock this layer here, since we're not going to be working on that one. And we'll just throw in a new layer, and we'll just call that one Shadows. All right. So um, we'll select a darker color for that. Just using this tool here, and we'll come down. Try not to go completely black. You can if you want to, but um. Shadows aren't all aren't completely black. They're generally just a darker form of color, depending on the lighting. And obviously, if you're in a night setting, a complete black for shadow is fine. However, if you're in like a day setting, you just kind of want to go for a darker tone of that color. Um, probably doesn't matter too much, seeing that we've got our flow and our brush dumb right down, and the flat color is going to bleed bleed through. It's just just to be on the safe side, it's always probably best to use a darker tone of the color for a shadow rather than a complete black. All right, so we just select the color there. Hit OK. I'm just making sure that our selection is there. Yeah, just using the wand tool, press W to get wand. Select background, Control H to hide. Go up, click on our shadows layer. Just get our brush again, make it a little bit bigger. And then we can just start laying in a bit of a shadow there. You can see instantly using the same brush settings that we used for the um, highlights that's starting to add a, a lot more depth to it. Um, don't get too carried away. Obviously if your drawings like mine and you've got already pretty extensive shadows and the penciling, you don't want to destroy that pencil look too much. Um, just use this to emphasize existing shadows. Don't try and add too much new ones. Or you could if you want to. Again, it's entirely up to the the painter themselves. Again, doing this on the other layer, you can use the eraser tool and take away areas that you think don't work. And there, voila, you have it. Um, you can obviously take these steps and really be quite fanatic about where your highlights and shadows are. Make your brush real small, and you could you know highlight out cracks and their scale and that sort of thing um, to conserve time I'll, I'll just leave it as the, at that I think um, yeah the key thing to painting is just to keep doing it 
Um, obviously the first drawing you're going to do isn't going to be the greatest thing in the world but generally I find that adding color to line art just emphasizes good line art. At the coloring stage if you're doing it like this doesn't make the artwork. Generally the, the drawing itself like the pencils um, that'll make an artwork. A good set of pencils will be good with without colors, with bad colors even. Um, so yeah just um, if you find yourself a bit uh, down about your drawings that sort of thing just don't give up just keep keep at it so yeah I hope um, this tutorial has helped and um, if you have any questions or anything just feel free to ask in the comments below and yeah have fun